the Alex Belfield In Conversation podcast with daisymedia.co.uk. It's the big show with me, Alex Belfield, and my next guest are four of the most famous pop stars in the world. They've had massive hits. They're wet, wet, wet. The first cab off the rank is Marty Pello. What was it like being you during the 80s? Because you were massive, weren't you? Do you know, wet, 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 um, back in 1987, we, we became, with Sweet Little Mystery and songs like that, we became pinups. We were smash hits, fodder, and um, yeah, there was posters on the wall, but we never took it for, we never took it seriously. Um, Marty was forever uh, and forever will be uh, the pin up I think the rest of us we really got on with the, the job in hand which is the making sure the gigs are great making sure the recordings are great making sure the songs are, are cool and getting on with the job of being a working musician and that's I think that's why we're still here 20 years later if we had pandered to the haircuts and, and trying to look you know get the, the good skin regime going then I think we would have faded like many other bands What's it like being you today and coming back after a five year break and now reforming this group going back in front of the fans and, and trying to be as good as people remember you because that's difficult isn't it Neil when you when you're remembered better than you are is that an extra pressure for you well actually we, we actually come back in 2004 to, to correct you there we come back with our greatest hits and we've done a, a tour back then but um no I mean we, we're just enjoying doing doing our music and that's what we enjoy doing and and hopefully other people will enjoy that as well and come along with us you know so yeah if I can add to that there is no pressure um, I've always said it since, since day one if you want to go up every morning and do a 95 job and you know digging a hole in the road there's pressure um, being in a band there's an awful lot of downtime where you sit around um, the doing of the, the making of the songs we take two and a half years to make an album we're real slow so there's no pressure there either going on the road um, when you get onto the big stages of the UK you have to put on a show it's about entertainment and we pull out all the big guns we have all the the biggest songs with the lasers and screens and explosions and you know everything with bells on so no I I think I think we're better what we definitely are is more relaxed that's for sure you know you sit back that's what I was going to say I mean back in 87 it was like wet 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 was our lives you know that was a major part we used to eat and drink and sleep wet 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 whereas now we've all kind of well not all of us but most of us have got wives and girlfriends and kids and so it's a little different now you know is it as exciting is it as fun when you're stood in the wings and you hear the roar of the crowd and it goes dark and you know that you've got to go on and do the business are you looking forward to that as much as you did 10 years ago absolutely i mean i think that's like tommy said we've been in the studio for like a year and a half two years and kind of slogging away and trying to write songs and and the benefit from that is you come out and you get to play these songs in front of like a live audience you know and there's no better feeling than, than seeing people sing to your songs that you've worked hard on and seen their reaction in their eyes and seeing them dancing and singing along is yeah. you know with a new album Timeless being released so well, the, the good thing about it is the new album we get new songs to play keeps us excited you know it keeps us on the, the kind of edge of our seats because we have to concentrate and work so hard to make sure those live up to the same standard as the previous songs um so th- that's the payoff for us and then hopefully the people that came along when we just the, the December tour there you know I think we 2007 spectacular huge venues and it's always good to know that towards the end you can pull out Love Is All Around and Good Night Girl and say you think that was good wait till you hear this you know and the whole place the roof com- comes off every time you know without doubt we're in a very lucky position and we do not take it for granted I think the the break of not being together I think what that gave us is the perspective that was necessary. Uh, if we hadn't taken the break, I think we were disappearing up a dark hole. Yes, we'd be careful how you say that. Um, but there's definitely light shining there now. I want to go back and talk a bit about the songwriting process because it always fascinates me. The same with a comedian. How do you know a joke's funny? How do you know a song's any good? It must still be surprising to you when you release an album and you think that's the song that everybody's going to love and of course they don't, they hate it and then they love track 12 or something. That has happened to us so many times. Uh, the Wet a Wet got together and for once we were unima- unanimous. This was years ago and we said that's the perfect song. This is going to be the one that breaks this album. I think it was back on the Holding Back the River and the song was Holding Back the River. This blues um, very musician thing. We th- a musician's kicking a song. We thought that's it. You know, plus we've got a high profile. This is going to crack it. Number forty six in the charts, and then sank without a trace. Um, since then, we take advice. We do the albums, and we sit back and we go. We play it to everyone. You know, anyone that comes anywhere near the house, get, come in, come in, postman, come in, listen to this. What, what do you think? <laughs> and you, you basically take the opinions of other people. Oh, I like that, and that's good, oh, that's dancey. You still end up with two or three songs, and then the big decision, what's your first single going to be? Um, 
there was four different opinions with the, the new single, too many people. Uh, and, we, we, you know, you're looking, you're saying, right, well, that's dancey, but that's more commercial, and that's got a better chorus, and all these different elements. Um, and we, you can kind of battle it out. You know, when I say battle it out, we have creative discussions now. We don't have arguments. Uh, <laughs> so mature. So much, yeah. <laughs> so, so mature. And you end up, it ended up with too many people, and I think it was the right choice, you know. It was interesting earlier when you talked about the best of album, because the record industry is continuing to change. And certainly in the last couple of years, it's unrecognisable from what it was with podcasts and downloads and all this business. Is it a worry for you bringing out an album? Because are people actually buying albums anymore or downloading albums, or is it just one or two tracks? For Wet Wet Wet, it's always got to be about the songs and the album. Um, we come from a time where you, you bought your album, you read all the notes, and, and that's how you discovered, uh, your, or like, we grew up with your bands. We know it's different, but we'll still go down the same route. We'll still make a record and put it out. Whether people buy it or not, or download it, that's n n neither here nor there. We know when we bring out a new song, we get to go and do this sort of thing. You get to talk into microphones, tell everybody about it, and invariably you get to go on stage and continue your career. Had we decided to sit back and every four or five years bring out the greatest hits again, repackaged with an extra track, then we would have become nothing except a nostalgia band. And I think that's a, uh, a never diminishing return, you know, and I don't think it's satisfying um, artistically. The only way that Wet Wet can continue is to do new songs, and whether that means putting it out and, you know, posting it to people or downloading it or podcasts, whatever it takes, we're here to do it. A few questions I want to ask you about being you today. I mean, you've taken some time out. In that time, what did you do, firstly? All right, well, for me, I, I took a break um, from music business. And it's the best lesson I could have learned. At the time when Wet Wet broke up, it was quite it was quite quite a dark cloud was sitting over the top of us. But the reason for the dark cloud was mainly because we'd even though we'd ten years success, we'd five years before that have been so fifteen years. We needed a break. There was and the success had got to a level where it was infringing on everything. Um, I had uh, young children. I still do have young children, but they were even younger then. And it was um, there was no time for them. There was no time for family life. Everything was wet to wet. So for me, my, my the, the sabbatical was uh, very well earned and very necessary. Just to bring we talked earlier about coming back down to earth. That's what that done. And what about you now? Um, well, like Thomas says, I mean, it was it was pretty dark for me as well because you're kind of like. You just, you're used to travelling or getting up and doing something and then it all kind of suddenly stopped and the phone stopped ringing and it's a bit, it's really strange because you've been so used to that kind of lifestyle so I, I kind of, I bought a flat in London and I moved to, I moved down to London for a couple of years and and I'd kind of done some various work with Graham, uh, the bass player and other things but nothing really came together, you know, so I didn't really do very much, I was just kind of lost. Aww. I suppose you really see who your true mates are and who your real mm -hmm. fans are and supporters are in terms of the people around you. Yeah. Um, because once you're not on that top of the pops every week and once you're not the big star anymore, it's very quick to see who is suddenly not interested in going to somebody else who is. Yeah, well, um, we, we unfortunately ended up getting caught up in all that. The glamour, for some reason, it, we, swore, we swore it would never happen, that we'd never become victims of the business. And we did. We all ended up kind of believing the hype to an extent. Uh, and I, I said earlier that the best lesson is when it does stop and no one does call you know you, that person you've known for four years from the record company who's your best mate no he's not no he's not it's a business he's, he's there to make money um, um, and we're just the product you know now the, we've turned the tables now we have our own record label we don't need the majors we talked about how the industry has changed it's changed in our favour well, we can go and do it yeah if it's if if, it, if the we don't need a, a fleet of trucks to go and deliver it anymore because you've got the internet you know you've got other companies that actually do the distribution and things so the music we've got down pat now we're learning the other side of the business you know and we're kind of um we could have sat back and just done everything major. No, let's get in a van and let's get out there. Let's go around. And we're playing these small shows as well. You know, it's not all about the 10,000 seaters. Uh, we've been playing some gigs that are to 100 people for various charity events or whatever. And they're nerve-wracking, you know, because you're not going on with the big songs with a two-hour set. You're going on with an hour set and you're trying to cram in as many of the new songs as possible. So we are, we're looking at each other and we're counting and going, right, how's this one start again and finish it? It's a very exciting time for us. And presumably when there's only 200 people, you can see every one of their eyes and see how they're reacting if they're going to sleep. And they can also throw things at you. Yes, thing we, uh, <laughs> um, underwear is optional, obviously. <laughs> um, and it's soft, it's got a soft 
landing. <laughs> I, I mean, it's been great fun. It just basically has, you know, to be back out again. I, th- I think we've mentioned the word a few times. We're just really appreciating the fact that we're in a lucky enough position that we can go and do big shows and play these songs. Thanks again and congratulations and welcome back. Yeah, thank you very much. It's great to be back. The Alex Belfield In Conversation podcast with daisymedia.co.uk Alex Belfield. It's been lengthy. It's always joyful to playing where it went and working where it went. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a pleasure. It's hard work, you know, obviously getting the songs together and uh, trying to be creative all the time. But I think, you know, you see the fruits of your labour. I think that's when it all makes sense and that's when it makes it worthwhile. And it's like anything in this life, you know, anything that is worthwhile takes a lot of hard work, you know, and it's sometimes the hardest thing to do, you know. But, you know, it's great. We're now out there playing the album, playing the new songs and getting an instant reaction and that's what it's about, you know, and and really what's coming back is that people generally like what they're hearing and that's mission accomplished. That's very fortunate, isn't it? Very fortunate indeed, yeah. I mean, the album's coming out and you never really know how it's going to be received, whether they're going to like it, whether they're going to dislike it, you know, and, and really, ultimately, you don't know either, you know, you think that you've done your best work, obviously, you know, because you've put your heart and soul into it, but you never really know until you actually play it. I want to talk to you about being in the band because I said to the other guys, to Neil and Tommy, that you've got a guy at the front who's got all the ladies, he's got all the knickers being thrown at him, and you're doing the hard work at the back and you don't get any credit. Yeah, well, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Ah, that's fine by me, you know. I mean, that's just the way that the music business tends to be but I think you know that's a pretty superficial look at it you know and I think when you scratch the surface and they look at the bass player they'll actually see a really good looking guy (laughs) (laughs) the thing about you Marty is if I could just be you for one day I I mean I'm a deeply unattractive man and just to be you for one day you're selling yourself (laughs) come on come on you you, you know that radio was the first you you, you know you're perfect for it you're being hard on yourself there I mean mean, to be me for a day I I, I would not see that as something an enjoyable experience I'd that more as an affliction. The ladies just seem to love you, don't they? Well, uh, 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 if I wish that if the ladies find you aesthetically pleasing, then that's a beautiful thing, but it's some, certainly not a premise to base one's career on. <laughs> Let's talk about your career, Marty. You're the one that everybody talks about and knows the name of in the band. Do you like that, or do you wish you could be Graham at the back, or the drummer, or, or someone else, and kind of take a sidestep? Well, I think that your character dictates your role, especially in a group. You know, this is what, uh, you know, I, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a singer and all that that encompasses some good that you've got the good things and the bad things you know but I, I think being the catalyst and, 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 uh, and at the front of the band is, is, what, uh, is what is what I'm meant to do you know and I think everybody's roles are infinitely just as important I mean it's, it's swings and roundabouts that's that's where I come into my own you know if uh, people are paying too much at- attention to the bass player then I'm not doing my job right <laughs> Tell me about the recording process and how you put a song together is there one person in the band who has more say? Yeah the bank manager <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I mean it's, it's a difficult one to define you know that sort of question we get asked that quite a lot how, how do you write a song what, what, what's the process and really there isn't one specific process there isn't one way of doing it you know it's not like oh here's how it starts basically you know we get the musical side together and then we'll look at the other aspects of the song and you know it's it's really what turns us on and what we think's good and and usually not always but usually if we like it you know are the people that follow us all like it as well you know but as you say you know there has to be one person and that person is me <laughs> that's ultimate authority and, and, and what, what is actually put out there yeah and then I oversee him <laughs> in an executive executive producer capacity and who's coming to see you these days well you know I've got a couple of friends coming down from Birmingham who are coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean you know yeah I mean th- there is a lot of uh, females that, that we can I cannot deny. But what surprised me was in Manchester, there was a lot of gentlemen uh, and they were singing all the words, you know, and, and that kind of took me a, a little bit by surprise, you know, because this, these concerts, you have to answer a question and then you get the tickets, you know, so, I mean, it's not that people can just go and buy them, they have to be fans of the band, you know, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, there's a mixed audience, you know, there's, there's some young people there you know there's some people our age which is the obvious one because you know they've grown up with the band and uh, you know there's guys here so I mean there's a whole kind of demographic it's not just one specific 
kind of audience that we're catering for. It's, you know, it's to everybody, you know, our music's not just for one type of person, it's for a lot, everybody, you know. I want to talk about the hedonism of Wet 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 in the old days when you were here before. It seems to me you worked so, so hard to be successful. Then you had that big hit, which, which was an international mega hit, and it destroyed everything. Uh, I don't know, that's a difficult question, you know. I think that uh, it'd be very easy to say that that was the catalyst for it all, I know, but when you've had 10 years of work living in out of each and our's pockets and uh, for us growing up together and experiencing all these sort of things and having the success that we did have where, we, where initially it was only four people who believed in us then it became millions and working every day that God sends for 10 years and, and uh, you know and touring and it's like all the things you wanted to do but it's like eating chocolate every day there comes a time where you have to have a sabbatical of some sort and how you go about doing that uh, was was very hard for we, we, we kind of sort of imploded in ourselves and we had to go away to come back you know and I think the priorities had to be weighed up and everybody's wants and needs with I'm trying to get as much information in a small amount of, uh, to answer your question but everybody's wants and needs changed the more you grow as a person and, and what, what we expected from we, we, and I think at the, the end up uh, around about 98 it was time to say goodbye and that had to happen unfortunately it wasn't probably as um, in, in a amicable way as we would have liked to have done it but then again that's youth and arrogance for us and, and the older you get you just wish you could have said I'll tell you well, let's just close the chapter and we'll come back in a year and, and, and that would, 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 have, would have been ideal very finally Marty I just want to talk to you about Love Is All Around I saw an interview with Pavarotti on Larry King once and he said how does it feel to know that your music will be around a long time after you've died how does it feel to know you've made a classic um, that will still probably be played in a hundred years I'm, I'm just still trying to go over the bit are you saying that I'm going to die <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing Maybe it hasn't happened not. sooner really isn't it I mean, <laughs> what's happening yeah let's face it I think that the point of having Love Is All Around is uh, in your armory and it's going to be a song that uh, that will be that will be played many years to come is, is fantastic I think that's a wonderful thing it's a wonderful it's a wonderful thing to have because we're the catalyst for that song Good, Bad or Indifferent and it has brought enjoyment to millions and millions and four Scotsmen too it is always sad to me when I interview stars who resent the thing that made them famous. You have to embrace what the public love, because ultimately they're the people who are paying for you to be here today. You don't have the choice, you know. I mean, that that's what I realised pretty early on was, you know, we make the music, but ultimately people decide what they're going to enjoy about you, you know, and, and that's often the hardest thing to take, because you think you know yourself better than, than, than anyone else, but really it's always the surprises that get thrown up, you know, I mean, I mean, we did Love Is All Around, for example. One new year, we spent a day and a half on it, didn't even think about it. We got asked to be part of a movie that was called Four Winds and a Funeral. What do we know? Yeah, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, it just takes on this kind of life all on its own. And and we couldn't control that. You know, we had, we had almost nothing to do with that. That was just a song that just broke out the box. It was and a just, happy mistake. It just went running, man. And... And, and that's why I, that's why I say we can't dictate what the people are going to like. You know, we just make the music, and as Marty says, we are the catalyst for the music that people enjoy. You know, there is a certain irony with this business that you can spend two and a half years making a new album, mm -hmm. and you make a song in seventy-two hours that is the thing that everybody remembers you for. Absolutely. It's amazing, isn't it? That's that's the whole thing about it. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we've had uh, more number one songs with other people's songs than we have with our own. But that's what we do. We do great versions of songs, and we like to sing and we enjoy songwriting if it you know when Goodnight Girl went to number one which was a self pen num uh, song of ours uh, it was just absolutely uh, uh, it was fulfilling but when Love Is All Around went to number one it was just as fulfilling because we make it, we make these songs our own and that's why we have such a strong identity and that's why we're, we're having a career that spans decades Congratulations on the new album it's really listenable it's really good and it's really different guys thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you.